Well, hello there, my name is HW, and thank you so much for watching Tone Jiggy TV. Today we are talking about something I call the cab trick. Now this is the cab trick, it's changing the cab on a Kemper profile to modify your profile and get a little different sound. Now you might be thinking, well HW, a lot of uh, units do that, but there's actually some really cool things you can do with the Kemper and ways you can approach these cabs and this library of cabs that you probably have on your Kemper that you actually can't really do on other devices. So I'm gonna show you how to do it on Rig Manager, but uh, just in case you're not using Rig Manager and the editor, everything I'm doing can also be accomplished by holding down the cab section and then browsing through other cabs on the uh, Kemper itself. But let's jump right into Rig Manager. Well, here we are in Rig Manager and we're playing the Match LC three profile, it's from the, um, their profiles of a matchless Laurel Canyon, which is like um, a 6v6 kind of little guy. Um, American inspired, but I wouldn't say overly Fender, it really kind of sounds uh, like, a, like a matchless kind of amp. Um, it's from the Match LC Tone Junkie pack, and uh, just to give you an idea of what it sounds like. <laughs> So that was my uh, one of my Sir JM Pros. It's got um, two Sir uh, V60 LPs, so kind of like a 60s um, single coil, but just a little bit like mid-range peak, and then um, and then an SSH Plus um, humbucker, which I think you could liken to like um, something in the vein of a of a Duncan JB or like maybe even a Demarzio Super Distortion. Just open, clear, big, good good for some heavier stuff, uh, but it sounds good all the time. So that's with the Match LC3 profile, and um, that's a great profile. What I wanna talk about though with this cab trick, I made a little folder here called cab trick. So I have this, this uh, profile selected, and I'm gonna go over to cab trick. And what I've got right here are three cabs that I've pulled out to try to illustrate um, some of what I want to talk about. So you heard that with the built-in matchless cab, and that cab was created from a Kemper profile, meaning um, it's just a studio profile, and so Kemper creates a cab section and a uh, an amp section, you know. It breaks up this profile. It's profiling an entire signal chain, and then it breaks up that profile into like two parts. For lack of a better term, the cabinet can be thought of as an impulse response. It's not what we usually call an IR in terms of um, it's not a WAV file that you can take and load onto other things, but it is an impulse response um, in the same way that a speaker is an impulse response. So uh, we can actually replace the impulse response with other impulse responses that have been made by the Kemper. And the cab trick is really about taking the wealth of um, IR tones or cabinet tones in the Kemper and kind of doing a trial and error study in what can we take from another profile that maybe matches well with, uh, uh, with, with the Kemper created you know, amplifier section. So we're kind of mixing and matching. And one of the cool things the Kemper does is the inaccuracy that may exist between creating a studio and a merged profile, that is the Kemper is guessing where the cab section begins and where the amp section ends. In that, you get some pretty cool variances in these different cabs. So what if it was that amp, but through the 65 Princeton 3 cab? So this is a cabinet from uh, a profile called the 65, 3, 65 Princeton 3, uh, uh, well, that was the name of the profile. And that is a, my 1965 Blackface Princeton. Let's try that. All I did there, you saw that, I dragged it down here. Let's see what that sounds like.
So to me, that instantly, just by changing the cabinet there, I still have an amp that kind of breaks up in a different way than a, than, than an, uh, a Fender would. But I have now what I hear is a smaller sounding um, kind of version of that amp. Obviously that 65 Princeton 3, if you're familiar with the actual amp, is a 110 combo cab. But let's take something larger and let's really now get into one of the cool things you can do um, kind of with this, um, this cabinet trick. Let's instead use a larger cabinet um, from my 65 Twin. And here's the V3 profile. So this cabinet was taken from the profile created of uh, V3, the vibrato channel, and the third profile straight up and down. Why does this matter? The cleaner the profile seems to be uh, uh, captured, sometimes it feels like the, the sort of brighter, uh, in general, um, the cabinet can be, or more open the cabinet sort of sounds. Um, so, so I've dragged that down here and now we're using that twin cab and it sounds like this. Okay, very cool. Sounds a bit bigger, um, sounds different, um, uh, like there's more, it doesn't sound as small of an amp to me, but it still sounds fendery, and so you're not getting a ton of mid-range. What if we use now VB3? Does some of that brightness from the whole profile transfer into the cabinet? Let's try it. Let's drag it down here and let's try it. <laughs> Okay, so that right there is a trick I use sometimes. I take a brighter cabinet, maybe a cabinet from a from a bright profile, and it adds a little bit more brightness. Some of that bright switch gets into the cabinet, and that makes sense because that bright switch in amps really adds frequencies that is, are often added or subtracted or taken away or modified by mic placement around the speaker and how close you get to that speaker's cone. Um, let's try another one here in uh, Twin V3 Plus, uh, we added in a boost, right? So we added in um, like a, a, a Klon kind of boost. It's a J-Rocket Archer. And uh, we added that in. Let's see if some of that mid-range actually comes through compared to the other ones. <laughs> So there's definitely some added thickness there. Now, really quick, I just want to show you these three because it's the same thing. Um, I'm grabbing where there's no bright switch. 
Uh, here we have the 59 F56 Baseman B3, J3, N3. Now I've shortened the names on here, but the important thing is this is not, uh, this cabinet right here is actually, I forgot to label it. It's actually the H30 speaker. So it's actually the profiles from that pack where I use my orange 412. So it's the basement running through a 1970 orange 412 with G12 H30 speakers. That's kind of like the, um, uh, well, the H30, the 70th anniversary H30 you get or the heritage H30. Um, it's the green back with the heavy magnet. That's what that means, heavy uh, 30, heavy 30 watts. But it's the green back. They were originally green, uh, with green backs. Um, 70th anniversary, like I said. So here, what it is is this amp with a bright, a bright channel, a normal channel, and a jumper channel. Now let me show you these um, in that order. Let me show you the bright one, and then the dark one, and then sort of you'll get sort of the fullness of the normal and the bright together. And you can hear how the cab is slightly modified on these, and it actually changes the sound of the cab. The cab is different, so it, we can use them to sort of give us a brighter kind of cab. Uh, a darker, fuller kind of cab, or jumpered kind of both of them. So check that out. Okay, so there you heard something a little bit different, and that's that, you know, um, the normal cab actually seemed to have kind of something else going on in the high end that I was expecting. So this goes to show you this cab trick, it's not really an exact science. We don't really know how exactly the cabs are going to come out, and sometimes they seem to come out, you know, more exaggerated than other times. So um, I haven't really been able to decode it like, uh, you know, it's always this way or one way. But I will say that if you come into your local library, and if it looks like mine, you know, 6,000 profiles or something, you, you end up realizing, wow, um, I have a wealth of, of stuff. Look, I've got the Embrit 56 Pro here. I've got the Tone Junkie uh, uh, 3PDW, you know, the t or my Tweed Super, the 56 Tweed Super. Um, it, it's he's got the 56 Twin here. There's there's so many the Tone Junkie 57 Deluxe. There's so many different uh, cabinets here, um, and I really only have Tone Junkie and Michael Britt stuff in my library. Oh, here's some Sela sounds. Um, that's a good pack. The 65 uh, D Verb. Um, I don't have a ton, you know, in here um, from different people, but there's a lot of really great stuff sitting already in your library. Just grab cabs from one profile to another. Sometimes if I find a really beautiful sounding cab, I may even, you know, tweak it and bring it over to other different sounding, um, you know, profiles and stuff. So uh, there's really a lot to be done here with the cab trick, and you certainly can find a lot of different variations that you're going to like a lot, I think. So check that out. My name is has been HW. Well, it is HW, It has uh, and it has been HW. And it still is. At the remainder of this video, it is still HW. Last time I checked. Hey, thanks so much for watching Tone Jiggy TV. Uh, like, subscribe, check out the other videos on the channel. I'm an HW. Hope you have a wonderful day, night, evening, whenever you're watching this. HW, check out the cab trick. Out.